welcome to the document panel overview video. When I refer to the document panel, this is the panel that I'm referring to. Now there's other panels here, but we're going to focus on this one today. The typical size that I use is 12 by 12 because the machine that I use uses 12 by 12 cutting mats. So you're going to change this depending on which machine you're designing or creating for. You have the option to select 12 by 24, or if you have like a Cameo Pro, you can select 24 by 24. And that, again, really comes down to which machine you're using. Now, let's say, for example, we're using a 12 by 24 mat. And let's say we're designing some really long vinyl, but we want to do it horizontally. Well, we can change the orientation to horizontal or landscape while maintaining that 12 by 24 mat size. You also have the option to change the units from inches to millimeters or centimeters, depending on what you want to work in. Now I'm going to go back to 12 by 12, get that centered. And the next little section here is called Show Grid. Now if I uncheck this, you can see the grid goes away. If I check it, the grid comes on. You can increase or decrease the amount of grid lines. Now there's a few reasons why you'd want to increase or decrease the number of grid lines. Not only are they a good reference, but they can also be used in your designs. If we just take a simple shape like a, well, just a square, and put it on the mat, I'm going to grab my selection tool so I can move it around. And I'm going to change the color by clicking on this little palette here. And let's make it something a little more visible. We'll make it orange. Let's go back to the document panel. So one thing that you can do is actually utilize the grid lines using a feature called Snap To. If we go to View and highlight Snap To and click on Grid, Okay, we'll go back and make sure that it's selected now. It is. Now when we move this, you'll notice that when we get close to a grid line, it's a little blue line that appears. And it kind of just, almost like a magnet, snaps to that line. So it's very helpful when it comes to precise alignments, especially if you're working with multiple objects. It really takes the guesswork out of aligning things. So for example here, I've got this one. You can see there's a vertical and a horizontal snap line. That's marked in blue, and if I let it go, it will literally snap it to these two lines. So let me duplicate this, and I'll paste another one. And let's say you want a staggered effect, and you know that you want it one inch apart. Well, you can see I'm grabbing this one now, and it's snapping to that vertical line, grid line. If I bring this up, it's going to snap right there too. So I know that these are, there's perfect one inch square here. And then I can take and draw a box around both of these, go to path, click union, and now it's one shape. And we've created this interesting shape. Okay, so I'll show you that again. We'll copy and paste. And now I'm going to take this and it is going to snap right there. Don't need to do any math. I don't need to do anything at all. I know that there's a perfect one inch square here and everything is lined up perfectly. So as far as the options here go, let me start with let me start with one subdivision. Okay, what that means is for grid lines, we have one line every six inches with one subdivision, meaning there's one line. Now if we increase this to two, what that means is at this point it's basically six divided by two, and we have a grid line every three inches. Okay? So you can achieve the same thing by doing one subdivision every three inches. The subdivision option goes all the way up to 20, and you can increase or decrease the frequency by changing the grid lines option here. So again, you can use these squares as visual guides, and you can also use them to your advantage using the Snap To feature. In addition to the grid, you can create something called guidelines. Okay, and you'll see you have this little ruler here along the top and the left edge of your workspace. If you take your mouse and click anywhere on that ruler, click and hold, you'll notice that this little blue line follows your mouse. And you can drop this guideline anywhere you want. Okay. So I'm going to put one there. And if you want one going vertically, you can click over on that ruler, move it over to where you want, and let it go. 
and it will keep it there. It will keep it there until you go into edit and remove the lines. Now let me show you how this may be helpful. So let's say for example you are designing some coasters. I'm going to create a little circle and I'm going to go over here to the left hand side and highlight, press and hold on this shape and it'll give me some options for some other shapes. I'm going to select circle and then I'm going to click on the mat and start dragging a circle. Now you'll notice that you can make an ellipse. Now if you want it to be a perfect circle, while you're dragging it, press and hold down your shift key. And now you can see that it's a perfect circle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just make a circle. Now let's just say for example that you're designing something for coaster blanks made by Cricut. Now if I scroll down here, it actually will tell me what the diameter is. They're 3.6 inches in diameter. So I can go back to shortcuts a lot and highlight this element. And I'm going to go under position and size, this position and size panel here. And I'm going to click keep proportions. And in the width, I'm going to type in 3.6. Okay. So that is now 3.6 inches. So this is where guidelines can be very helpful. Let's say, for example, that you want to customize this with someone's name. Maybe it's for a wedding and you want to put some initials on it. You can take and pull a guideline from the top and place that guideline over the template wherever you think you may want your text. So I'm going to use the, the rule of thirds here and I'm going to pop it right about here. Okay. And then when we go over here to the text tool or the type tool, and I'm not going to get fancy with the font. I'll just put J and M. I'm going to grab my selection tool, go over to the color here, and I'm just going to change that to black so it's a little more visible. What you'll notice, since we have the Snap To feature on, and actually let me double check that. Let's go under View, Snap To. Ah, so we do have it snapping to the grid. We can uncheck that, and let's go to Snap To Guidelines. So now sure cuts a lot will snap this directly onto this guideline. And you can see how it almost pops it in and pulls it in like a magnet. Now this comes in very handy when it comes to creating things with consistency. Now one other thing that we can do to ensure that we have consistency is lock this layer back here. Okay, so if we go under layers and hit this little lock, we won't be able to click on it, we won't be able to move it, it will stay right there. It'll also make it a lot easier to highlight the text without accidentally clicking on this element here. So moving on here in the document panel, the next option is workspace alpha. Decreasing this value allows you to change the opacity of everything on your mat. Next on the list is show outline only, and that will allow you to remove any fill that is inside of an element by just clicking on it so that you can just see just the lines. Next we have something called show print margins and when you check this it will actually show you the printable area on your default printer, the one that's selected. Now right now it's showing it in landscape mode because I have the orientation set for landscape but if I change this to vertical you'll see that it moved it vertically and up here on the top left corner it also indicates which printer is your default printer which you can change by going up to file and going into page setup and you can change your default printer and you can see that it updated it there as well. So you can technically use the software to design things that you'll ultimately print. So this little guide is very useful and will help you visually understand your print area. Now the next option here is show registration marks and this is going to change depending on which cutting machine you're using. Now I have right now my cutter is set to the Caesar cutter, but if you go in here and if you change this to, let's say, a silhouette, let's do a Cameo 5, add it to the list, you can see that the registration marks change because, well, they're different for the silhouette Cameo compared to the Caesar. And while the software cannot cut directly to, say, a Cricut machine, it is compatible with dozens of different machines and you can cut and print and cut directly from the software to those machines. 
So next we have the show page color option. If I turn this on, I can click on this little box here and I can just change the background. So you can use this for fun. Or let's say, for example, you're designing something that contains a lot of white elements. Now, if we use the default color, which is a white, it's going to be very hard to see that outline. So we can go in here and change that color to whatever we find to be the most helpful to kind of create that contrast so we can see those white shapes a lot better. Now, I'm sure there's many other uses for this, but this is one that specifically comes to mind. Okay, now finally, let's take a look at this little section called Show Template. And I'm going to turn this off and go back in here and change this color to black so we can see it. So now remember we were talking about how the Cricut coasters were 3.6 inches in diameter. Now let's say we have an Etsy shop where this is what we do exclusively. Or maybe this is just one of the elements that we sell in our Etsy shop and we're constantly bringing this up and using it as a template. Well, rather than opening up a new mat and having to add a new circle every time, size it, lock it, what you can do is, well, for one, let's take this shape because it's already at 3.6 inches wide or in diameter. And I'm gonna go to File and Export It as an SVG. And we'll call it Cricut Coaster, okay? I'm going to save it to my desktop as an SVG file and hit OK. And now I'm going to go under here where it says Show Template. I'm actually going to remove this one here. I have Show Template checked. Nothing comes up just yet. But let's click Set Template. Okay. And I'm going to go under, here's, you can mark some as favorites. I'll go over that in a second. There are some predefined templates that are available in Shortcuts a lot. Now, I don't know how accurate these are. I think maybe they're more as an example. But let's say, for example, you're wanting to design something around a light switch. You can click on that template, move it to wherever you want on the mat, and hit OK. And it'll place it on your mat, completely locked. You can't do anything to it. It's just a template that's there as a guide. OK, but let's go back under Set Template. And we're going to get rid of that one. Actually, we're going to go under My Mats. And here, I'm going to click this little button here to add my own template as an SVG file. It's that same Cricut Coaster SVG that we just saved. We know that it's exactly 3.6 inches. Here it is. Okay. And we can move that to wherever we want on the mat. We can change the color. Let's say we're making some Halloween ones and we just want to make it orange. Okay, Size is custom, but you can increase or decrease it here. I wouldn't because you already know that it needs to be 3.6. And then we'll hit OK. And there is your template. Can't move it, can't do anything with it. You can design to your heart's content without having to worry about it going anywhere. Let me hide this template. You know, another idea that I can give you here, uh, many of you that do your own designing. Sometimes you design cutting boards and you know you have a specific area that you can actually design on. Let's just say for example, and I'm going to grab my selection tool. Let's say that your area for design is 10 inches by 8 inches. Okay, let's just say that this is the area in which you can actually do designing for your cutting board. Okay. And I'm going to go to File, Export, and I'll call this one Cutting Board. Gives me the exact area that I can design on. We'll go back here under Show Template. I'm going to delete this now that we saved it. Go to Set Template. And we're going to, we're going to go under My Mats and add a new document, Cutting Board. There it is right there. Move it over here. Change the color and hit OK, and there. And now you have that template there. Can't move it at all. And let's go back under Guidelines, and let's remove all the guidelines. And here we are designing our cutting board. I'm going to grab a guide, and let's just say 
I want to keep every, I want to keep a nice little border around it. Keep my guidelines there. And just try to keep everything within that area. And then let's bring down another guideline. This is where I'm going to put my first bit of text. I can put my next section of text there. So again, the guidelines are great. I'm just going to put test here and take, and it'll snap right to those guidelines. Okay. <clears throat> so again, even if you close out of sure cuts a lot, open up a new project, you go under show template, set template, it will save those. Okay, you can also zoom in on these to see them a little bit closer. But it's that simple to bring up your custom templates.